In this presentation, a 1-1-C-1 four-fragment fracture will be treated with the proximal humerus internal locking system, or philos. The objectives of this exercise are to explain the clinical indications for the philos, the various plate holes, the patient positioning, the surgical approach, the reduction of the fracture, and the correct application of the philos on a 1-1-C-1-4 fragment fracture. The most common indications for the philos include dislocated 2, 3, and 4 fragment fractures of the proximal humerus, including fractures in osteoporotic bone, pseudarthroses, and osteotomies of the proximal humerus. The proximal portion of the philos plate has 10 suture holes of 2 mm diameter for the fixation of the tendons of the rotator cuff. There are also 9 plate holes. The most proximal holes, at level A, are parallel to one another and angle the screws slightly upwards. At the next level, B, the holes are staggered and the screws converge in the head of the humerus. At level C, the holes are inclined upwards and the screws diverge in the head of the humerus. The next hole, at level D, is an LCP combination hole which is inclined slightly upwards. This inclination as well as the anatomical shape of the plate, directs the screw upwards into the head of the humerus. At level E, the holes diverge slightly and incline upwards to provide the screws with purchase in the opposite calcar region. A variety of screw combinations in the proximal part of the plate is possible. The most proximal hole in the shaft of the plate will take either a conventional 3.5 mm screw or a locking head screw. By using a conventional 3.5 mm screw in the longer portion of the hole, the plate can be adjusted vertically. The distal holes are of the LCP combination type. Surgery is normally performed with the patient in the beach chair position. The appropriate surgical approach is an anterior access in the deltopectoral sulcus. The incision starts at the coracoid process and extends to the humerus at the level of the deltoid tuberosity. The cephalic vein is identified proximally and usually retracted laterally while exposing the deltopectoral plane. The pectoralis fascia is incised lateral to the tendon of the short head of the biceps brachii muscle, maintaining the coracoacromial ligament proximally and incising the proximal one to two centimeters of the pectoralis major muscle insertion. The long head of the biceps brachii muscle is identified under the pectoralis major and serves as a reference for the lesser and greater tuberosities and their associated rotator cuff muscles. The fracture lines of this four-fragment fracture separate the humeral shaft from the lesser tubercle, the greater tubercle, and the head fragment. On this multifragmentary proximal humeral fracture, the black rubber represents the insertion of the infraspinatus, the supraspinatus, and the subscapularis. A bone hook is used to pull the dislocated fragment of the greater tubercle forwards. Sutures are attached to the tendinous insertions of these muscles. The sutures fix the tubercles to the plate, which secures the reduction and neutralizes the muscular traction of the rotator cuff.
A pull on the sutures attached to the muscle tendon, a periosteal elevator, and a sharp hook may help to achieve the required reduction. The reduction is held in position temporarily with K-wires. The K-wires are placed so that they do not block the later positioning of the plate. The large pointed reduction forceps can be a help at this stage. The sutures are passed through the suture holes of the plate. The Philos aiming device is attached to the plate. The plate is slid down the sutures to the bone. The plate is positioned 5 to 10 millimeters dorsal to the posterior delimitation of the intertubercular sulcus and usually 8 millimeters caudal to the upper edge of the greater tubercle. The correct position is found by placing a K-wire through the proximal guide hole of the aiming device. The K-wire should be aimed at the level of the joint surface. The plate can now be fixed to the bone. Both cortices are drilled through the dynamic part of the long hole, using the universal drill guide in the neutral position and the 2.5 mm drill bit. The screw length is determined with the depth gauge. The hole is tapped, and a 3.5 mm cortex screw is inserted. In this exercise, locking head screws will be used at levels A, B, C, and E, as shown here. The triple sleeve combination is used to ensure that the axial position of the screws in the proximal portion of the plate is correct. As an option, the LCP drill sleeve can be used. The K-wire sleeve is removed, and the 2.8 mm LCP drill bit with length markings is used through the drill sleeve to drill the hole. If this drill bit is not available, or if there is any uncertainty about the depth of the drilling, then it's recommended to use the depth gauge. The length of the screw to be used is read off the drill bit. The drill bit and the drill sleeve are removed. A self-tapping 3.5 mm locking head screw is now inserted. Using the 1.5 newton meter torque limiter with the screwdriver shaft, the locking head screws are fully tightened. The centering sleeve is removed. After all the required holes are filled, the proximal fixation of the plate is complete. The remaining shaft holes are filled with conventional screws. The temporary K-wires, as well as the aiming device, are removed. To neutralize the muscular traction of the rotator cuff, the sutures are secured to the plate and trimmed. The fixation of the multifragment fracture is now complete, and the incision is closed. 
X-rays taken directly after the operation show the clinical outcome. Exercises are started as soon as possible after surgery to prevent any later restrictions of movement. However, it is crucial that the fracture be completely consolidated before full load is exerted. This presentation has demonstrated the clinical indications for the proximal humerus internal locking system, philos, the various plate holes, the patient positioning, the surgical approach, and the correct application of the philos on a 1-1-C1 four-fragment fracture.